Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you all here. And uh, welcome to Tuesday Talk. And we want to start off with Andrea has an announcement about tomorrow. And then we'll have one from Rodney. Tomorrow is groundbreaking. I don't know if you like that. They're actually trenching today. It's kind of funny to look at. Um, but we're going to have the groundbreaking ceremony. We will gather right out here. Darwin's going to take the green stuff down so that you can look out and see um, as they dig the hole and bury the time capsule. So today is the last day to get your favorite things on a card and in the boxes in the lobbies. And we'll put those in the time capsule tomorrow morning. Um, and if you got some other little thing you think should go in there, drop it off, and we'll get that taken care of. Um, for those who have already done it, I really appreciate it. Anyway, we'll have, after we bury the time capsule, we'll retreat to the breezeway, and Ricky's got something planned for us. He hasn't told me what, but he said he's got something planned, so. It's 3.30, 3.30. Good morning, everybody. Boy, we should start in March off with a bang, aren't we? I mean, here we are right on the very first day of the month in our Tuesday talk, and then tomorrow we've got groundbreaking, and what do we have Wednesday? We have something Wednesday. That is the hope is Ash Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. I don't know, I keep your calendars handy, and that probably just reversed my order of things, but let's just do it this way. Save the date. I have a date you want to say. That date is February 11th. Excuse me. <laughs> April. April, April, April 11th, that's a Monday, at 2 p.m. in the Grand Lobby South. Why do you want to save that day, you wonder? Well, we're going to have someone from the Supervisor of Elections Office coming out here to give us everything we need and want to know about how we can get our votes counted. <laughs> This year, there have been changes. There'll be changes until the legislature's through in the next few days. These people are gonna come out here and educate us on what we need to know to make sure we're registered properly, where we have to go, when we have to do it, and like that. More details to follow, okay? Now really, what I'm here to talk about, in addition to that, is just for the Life Care Residents Association, Flyper's purpose and while we're talking to you about them today. Their mission is to promote and protect the rights, your rights, of all the citizens of CCRCs. It's a separate entity from the Board of Directors. The reach, I mean the Regents, the Oaks Residence uh, Council, RORO. It's the watchdog as it relates to the legislative affairs. You've seen some evidence of that recently in the letters, that, the e-letters that have been coming every week on the newsletters uh, from from Bennett up in uh, Flagler headquarters. I can't believe I'm being taped there. <laughs> okay. Local Flagler chapter's mission is to help residents understand the state level issues that are going to affect you. Voter education events such as I just told you about and hosting legislators and officials from all levels of governments or other things we do. We do whatever's needed at the time. Now right now, your FLICRA board of directors has nine members and three of them rotate off each year. Our fiscal year ends April 1st. So we're now recruiting three individuals from among you to join our FLICRA board at this time. If you are looking for an opportunity to serve this community, we welcome you. And for more information, I'd appreciate it if you contact me in the next few days. I hope to hear from you. Thank you. Okay.
baby, Brent. All right. Thank you, Chris. Good morning, everybody. All right, we're going to get uh, turned around and situated on uh, this screen. And uh, first slide, and I'm going to have to uh, to talk to Tim. This is the uh, first slide. Next slide. Uh, <laughs> this is the second week in a row that uh, Tim is a no-show. Uh, so I'll talk to Tim and, and uh, make sure we get him back on the on the calendar. I'll go ahead and give the uh, the update. So this week it's uh, all about laying the foundation. You see the trenching out there now. Uh, they're going to be uh, trenching not only the uh, the foundation, including the the footings, but they also are going to be uh, putting in the uh, the trenching for the plumbing and the electrical and the gas and uh, all the utilities that are going to uh, support the new construction. So you'll be uh, able by the end of the week to sort of see how this building is is uh, laying out, and they hope. I think this is overly optimistic, but they hope to be able to start uh, pouring some of that concrete uh, on, on Thursday or Friday. So we'll see uh, some, some changes this week. Um, there are some additional uh, safety concerns that uh, the contractor is working with. Uh, they evidently uh, left the property open, the gates to the uh, construction site open over the weekend. So we have talked to them about uh, uh, tightening up uh, project security and, and making sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, and then uh, some of that roping that is uh, protecting residents from the construction site off of the South Grand Lobby, uh, we've re asked them to replace that with fencing uh, so it's a little bit more uh, safe for, for our residents. All right, next slide. We're going to do uh, the COVID update, and again, the news is uh, really looking good. Uh, the, this is uh, data for the full United States. Uh, new cases uh, fell by 37% this week. New daily cases uh, fell, deaths uh, fell by 14%, and the hospitalization rate fell by 19%. So uh, COVID, uh, uh, we've seen this uh, four consecutive weeks where we've had double digit reductions in the uh, number of new cases. So pretty clearly uh, this variant of, uh, of COVID has, uh, I think we've put this behind us and we're moving on to whatever the future is going to hold. Next slide. This is a uh, you know, those are numbers. I think this is a better visual representation of, of really what we're seeing. And so uh, starting back in late November, uh, that's when the Omicron variant really hit the United States. You can see it, it really spiked in just a matter of a couple of short weeks. It also declined as rapidly as it spiked. And you can see where we are now. Uh, we're just a, a blip down there on the uh, on the radar. And if we look at the next slide, we can see the uh, uh, positivity rate in uh, our county is now 5.6%. You've seen that drop for each of the, the past three weeks. And so statistically, what that means is you are more likely to uh, have flu than you are to contract COVID. And even like more specifically, you're more likely to die in an airplane crash than you are to die from, from COVID right now. So, so, so the, the numbers are looking good. Uh, if you're really nervous, wear your mask and stay off planes. So, so uh, next slide. This is... Um, vaccine data information, and uh, uh, this is specifically for the state of Florida. State of Florida is uh, doing a little bit better uh, than uh, the rest of the country. This is a little misleading. You'll look at that, uh, the vaccine total, 74%. That's for five plus. Uh, if you add the five uh, or under categories in there, it drops uh, to about 62%. Uh, but uh, uh, that's an effective rate of vaccination. That means three out of every four residents uh, that you're going to come into contact with 
uh, will have been vaccinated. And you can see that the numbers in, in the uh, senior population starting at uh, age 50 up, uh, those numbers are, are really represent a high percentage of, of seniors who are vaccinated and have received uh, the booster. Next slide. So that's it uh, for COVID. And uh, I wanna go in and uh, finish the legislative update. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, uh, four of the bills that were before the uh, legislative bodies. And I wanna come back and just finish this off. Uh, we are now in week seven of the session. Uh, and the first one is this House Bill 313. It's the delegation of administration of prescription medications. And so the, these first uh, uh, two bills really are related at assisting uh, acute care hospitals and long-term care communities uh, who are suffering with uh, staffing issues. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, the staffing has dried up in terms of clinical uh, staffing, that's uh, LPNs, RNs, and, and CNAs, and so the uh, state is looking for alternatives. Now, these are not alternatives that are particularly, uh, there. you cannot say that they're going to drive quality improvements within uh, the industry because they're, they're not. They are a lessening of restrictions that typically, uh, I don't think Leading Age or Flycra uh, or even our, our, uh, uh, the societies that uh, support our industry would support, but because of the circumstances and the fact that there just isn't staff out there right now, these are some temporary measures that the legislative bodies are looking at uh, enacting to assist uh, skilled nursing centers and acute care hospitals in providing resident care. And it's based on the belief that something is better than nothing. And so I, that's hard not to get behind and hard not so, to support. FLICRA uh, is supporting both of these first two pieces of legislation, but they are, are doing so with the caveat, again, that we, we talked about last week. They're doing it as a temporary measure and they want a sunset law uh, attached to it. And so they don't want this to become the new normal, uh, but they uh, recognize that the uh, industry, uh, the long-term care industry is facing some pretty significant challenges and they wanna make sure that we're able to address those challenges and make sure that residents are receiving adequate care. So this uh, uh, 313, what this actually allows is right now in acute care hospitals and long-term care facilities, medications can only be administered by a registered nurse. This would allow a registered nurse to supervise the administration of medications and it would allow uh, LPNs, CNAs, home health aides, uh, medication aides and personal care attendants to administer medications under the auspices of a direct care RN. And so it's a, it's a force multiplier. And so typically uh, in, in our skilled nursing, we have one RN on uh, each shift. This would allow additional staff members to assist with that medication delivery uh, because it's, it's staffing for licensed staff is just really tough right now. The companion bill is a Senate Bill 469 and it's patient care health care facilities. Now this is uh, directed specifically at long-term care communities and this would allow home health aides, uh, certified nurse aides, um, and uh, personal care attendants to take care of what's typically considered direct hands-on nursing functions. And those would, there's a big list and I'll just read a couple of items off of them. Uh, CNAs would be able to put on a transdermal patch for pain. Uh, they would be able to give insulin that was pre-filled by the registered nurse. Uh, they could give the shot, they couldn't pre-fill the medication. Uh, it would allow CNAs to do a blood, bl blood glucose uh, checks. It would allow the application and removing of oxygen. Uh, it would allow CNAs to take vitals and to handle colostomy bags uh, as well. So again, some of those things that were limited in the past to direct care 
uh, clinical nurses, LPNs and RNs, uh, it's going to allow us to use CNAs to provide that level of care. And it's based on the fact that there are no RNs and LPNs that, that are available. And so, um, again, I support this. It's not, it's not the permanent direction that I'd like to see uh, a Regency Oaks or this industry go, but it allows us some temporary uh, solutions on uh, what's a very difficult issue. Um, same thing with uh, uh, Senate Bill 3112. This is the telehealth bill. And this is something that FLICRA completely supports, and this is a great addition. Uh, it will allow the physician who is using telehealth, regardless of uh, your location, whether you're in the hospital or skilled nursing or in the uh, independent living or even your own home out in the community, it would allow the telehealth doctor to prescribe controlled substances. So in the past, you, if you needed a, a, a painkiller, or uh, any, a, a narcotic of any type, telehealth was not available to you. You had to present uh, at the hospital and show symptoms in order to get a prescription. This is gonna change that so that telehealth now has the ability to meet all needs in all locations. And so this is a significant piece of legislative change uh, that Flicker supports, Leading Age supports, and uh, uh, we support it here at Regency Oaks as well. All right, next slide. Uh, odds and ends. So I checked with uh, Ricky. There is absolutely no reason why uh, hand sanitizers cannot be used in the tavern. And so he has uh, some temporary hand sanitizers in there uh, until he can get one of the uh, big professional ones that, you know, the stand with uh, the squirt. So that has, uh, we've taken care of that. The skilled nursing uh, finished the construction of their new kitchen, and uh, it uh, came out great. We are waiting for a final uh, sign-off from the building department, uh, but in the next uh, 30 days or so, we'll do a, a, a grand opening ceremony over in the skilled nursing, and if you wanna walk through one of the new kitchens, uh, you'll have a chance to do that. We've always uh, opened up the kitchens for uh, 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 dusty shoes tours uh, when we did the north and the south kitchen. This was the last kitchen on campus that had to be done and uh, it came out really nice and uh, uh, that kitchen was, was 32 years old. It was really showing its age and so we've had a complete remodel over there. A reminder that this Friday at 10 o'clock is the monthly forum and uh, we uh, will have our usual administrative reports, but the uh, forum this month also is going to feature a report out from our rose holders on the five objectives that Regency Oaks has for 2022. We'll start the meeting with uh, that report and uh, it's something you'll, you won't wanna miss. Next, please. More stuff. Uh, yay, you're going to be excited about this. So staffing continues to improve and starting next Tuesday uh, in the North Dining Room, we will be uh, returning a sit-down dining for lunch only uh, starting next Tuesday in the North Building and the buffet will disappear for lunch. Now, we're not ready. Uh, we want to start slow, so we're going to do lunch first, and uh, then we'll, we'll introduce the dinner service uh, shortly thereafter. I'm going to ask for your patience and support as we make this transition. Uh, Ricky tells me that we are, we're at the staffing level that we need, but here's the problem. They're all new staff. They've never waited on a table in their lives. Yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> And so they've, they've sort of been assisting with drinks and coffee and desserts, and, uh, but they've, none of them know how to wait a table. And so be patient, please, and let us have an opportunity to get these uh, young kids trained up. They're great young kids. They just don't know anything yet. 
and uh, we'll, we're, 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 going to, we're going to school them up and, and get them trained and, and you know, help us, uh, but, but encourage them and, and uh, help them to learn so that uh, uh, we're still, uh, we are looking at our staffing. We still believe uh, that March is the month that is going to return all of the services to Regency Oaks. Uh, and so that's exciting news. Um, a mystery. The North Building family album is missing. It's been gone for about a month, and uh, uh, we cannot update and keep the uh, uh, new pictures of new residents uh, in that book if it's not in the lobby. I don't know uh, uh, what happened to it or who might have borrowed it or if it's uh, uh, gone on a, a, a trip, <laughs> but uh, if, if you see or could return if you have, uh, the family album in the North Building. We'll be happy to uh, get that updated and, and let it share with, be shared with all the residents. No idea what happened to it. Let's go back to uh, staffing. Again, this is a great story to tell. Uh, on the left-hand column, you see the number of new hires, uh, and uh, that's uh, 30. Eight, I think, and if you look at the right-hand side, it's the number of terminations, and that's over the last six weeks. So I want to—I want you to think about that. It's 38 new staff members over the last six weeks, and if you go back to the first of January, that number is 54, and so we've really made some progress with uh, uh, with hiring, and uh, it's—I know it's been a very uh, difficult period these last five months as we've struggled with the staffing and getting everyone vaccinated on campus and it's had an impact to the services we provide. We couldn't have done it without your support. I know uh, this is not something anyone signed up for, but you've been troopers in supporting us and uh, staying with us as we rebuild our staff and we're getting ready to return to normal operations. So. We're almost there, and uh, just you need to hang on another week or two. Another piece of good news is uh, Jesse has only one housekeeping position still to fill. So housekeeping is going to be returning in March as well. He is training them up right now, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to, to having housekeeping return. Weekly. Weekly housekeeping return. <laughs> All right, next slide. So here's a, a picture of the uh, new solar panels that are uh, on the carport. This is the carport over there near the trash compactor in the garden. And uh, uh, this is going to, uh, it is already fed back into the electrical system so that any excess energy that we capture can be returned to the utility company for a credit. Uh, the permitting, it's completely installed with the exception of, of two things. It's not uh, signed off on by the building, uh, per building department, so we can't turn it on. Uh, that should happen sometime this week. And then uh, we also have to install the down outlets, which were not part of the project. Uh, he's the same guy who's going to do it, but he has to do that after the permit is signed off. So uh, we will have uh, down uh, uh, piping with outlets, and this is we're going to see the uh, golf carts across the campus relocated to this area so that we will create a charging station. So that's the purpose. Uh, we get free charging because it's all solar and any excess energy is uh, fed back into uh, the uh, power source and uh, the community will get a credit. Uh, this is, we were talking about this the, uh, uh, yesterday and this is like the fifth solar demonstration project that Regency Oaks has had. Uh, we had uh, the charging station uh, for electric vehicles. We had the solar uh, lighting for uh, the patio outside the pool deck. We've had this uh, a project right here. We continue to, to get some demonstration projects. And ultimately, what we would like to see is a larger scale solar project here at Regency Oaks. Uh, and there are, we have a couple of different ideas that have been batted around. Uh, but 
this is a, a great example of how we continue to make progress uh, with solar energy and uh, we are becoming sort of the beta test site for uh, the company when it comes to, to solar power. Next slide. Give Earl a hand. Give Earl a hand. <laughs> 